Imagine a world where technology and real estate merge to create a dynamic ecosystem. Welcome to the realm of prop tech startups, a sector that's bracing for a rebound despite a 40% investment drop in 2022. This surprising dip in financial backing was largely due to the parched real estate market, a result of escalating interest rates. But even in the face of adversity, the spark of innovation refuses to be snuffed out. We take a peek at 26 promising prop tech startups that have emerged in 2023, each one bursting with potential and the shared ambition to revolutionize the industry. These companies, handpicked by venture capitalists, remain undeterred by the market's arid condition. They are the silver lining in the cloud, the beacons of hope in an otherwise grim landscape. Each startup brings with it a unique approach, a fresh perspective, and a transformative solution to the challenges the real estate sector faces. They are the vanguards of a new era in property technology, the pioneers of a movement that aims to reshape the industry from the ground up. Despite the market drought, these startups are not just surviving, they're thriving. They're harnessing the power of technology to breathe life back into the real estate sector, proving that even in the bleakest of times, innovation continues to flourish. As the adage goes, when one door closes, another opens. Prop tech startups are ready to seize the moment and redefine the real estate landscape. In the world of finance, the storm is raging. From plunging shares to skyrocketing credit default swaps, banks are facing a wild ride. Let's step into the eye of the storm where the winds of change are blowing the hardest. Deutsche Bank. Recently, this banking giant faced a steep plunge in shares. To compound the problem, its credit default swaps surged, adding to the ongoing chaos. This is more than just a bad day on Wall Street. It's a symptom of the turbulence rocking the banking sector. A whirlwind of uncertainty is swirling around, making it difficult for even the most seasoned investors to predict the next gust. But every storm has its heroes, and in the banking sector, it's the chief risk officers who don the cape. Their role is more crucial now than ever before. They are the ones who tell firms to take fewer risks, to batten down the hatches when the weather gets rough. In a sector where taking risks can lead to either soaring profits or devastating losses, these individuals navigate the storm, steering their companies away from the rocks of financial ruin. The job of a chief risk officer is a challenging one. They are the lookouts, constantly scanning the horizon for potential threats. They have to balance the appetite for growth with the need to safeguard against potential losses. It's a tightrope walk, and in today's volatile banking climate, that rope is swaying more than ever. Yet, despite these challenges, the importance of the chief risk officer cannot be overstated. They are the ones who ensure the ship stays afloat, even in the choppiest of waters. They implement strategies to mitigate risk, maintain financial stability, and ensure the bank's survival. Without them, the banking sector would be like a ship without a compass, lost in the storm. In the face of adversity, the banking sector is learning to adapt and evolve. As they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Generation Z, known for their digital savviness and progressive views, are facing a harsh reality mounting debt, and delayed payments. This generation, the most recent to enter the workforce, is grappling with a financial situation that is significantly more challenging than what their predecessors faced. These young adults are not just dealing with student loans, which have been a perennial issue for previous generations. They are also wrestling with credit card debt, personal loans, and other forms of debt at a rate faster than any other generation before them. Moreover, they are falling behind on payments further exacerbating their financial difficulties. This growing debt and the inability to make timely payments have serious implications for Generation Z's personal finances. It's not just about struggling to make ends meet today, it's about the long-term consequences. With each delayed payment, their credit scores take a hit, making it harder for them to secure loans in the future. This could potentially affect their ability to buy a home, start a business, or even secure a job. Additionally, this financial pressure is causing considerable stress among Generation Z. Studies have shown that financial stress can lead to mental health issues like anxiety and depression. This in turn can affect their work performance, creating a vicious cycle that is hard to break. But why is Generation Z struggling financially? There are several factors at play here. One is the rising cost of living, which has outpaced wage growth. Then there's the issue of financial literacy. Many members of Generation Z lack a basic understanding of personal finance, making it hard for them to manage their money effectively. Moreover, the economic uncertainty caused by events like the COVID-19 pandemic has hit Generation Z particularly hard. Many lost their jobs or had their hours cut, making it even more challenging to keep up with their financial obligations. 
The financial struggles of Generation Z are a stark reminder of the importance of financial literacy. As they navigate their way forward, we hope for a brighter future. The battle against COVID-19 rages on, but with every passing day, we inch closer to victory. The key to a better life by 2023, vaccination. In a world still grappling with the pandemic, a beacon of hope emerged when Pfizer and BioNTech received the first FDA approval for a COVID-19 vaccine, Comirnaty. This wasn't just a scientific breakthrough, it was a testament to human resilience and innovation in the face of adversity. But the story doesn't end here, oh no. The battle against the virus continues to evolve, and so does our approach. Pfizer's CEO Albert Borla has suggested that COVID-19 booster shots could become an annual occurrence. A bit like your yearly flu shot, if you will. While this might seem daunting to some, it's a crucial step in maintaining our defenses against the virus, much like updating our computer's antivirus software. So what could this mean for the future? Here's the good news. If we can ensure enough people are vaccinated, life could indeed start looking brighter by 2023. That's right, widespread vaccination could be our ticket to reclaiming normalcy, to hugging our loved ones without fear, to filling stadiums and concert halls with the joyous roars and applause of crowds. The key lies in our hands, or rather, in our arms. Vaccination isn't just about protecting ourselves, it's about safeguarding our communities, our societies, our world. So as we continue to roll up our sleeves and bear arms against the virus, quite literally, let's not forget that each jab is a step forward, a step towards victory. The road to recovery is long, but with each jab, we are one step closer to a brighter, healthier future. In a world often characterized by greed and self-interest, Mackenzie Scott, Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, is a beacon of hope. Stepping away from the shadows of her billionaire ex-husband, Scott has emerged as a philanthropist of considerable significance. With a heart as large as her fortune, she has committed herself to causes that uplift and empower the vulnerable. One of her most notable philanthropic endeavors is Yield Giving, a charitable organization that is set to redefine the landscape of giving. With a donation fund of a whopping $250 million, Yield Giving is not just a testament to Scott's generosity, but also to her vision for a more equitable world. But Scott's philanthropy is not a one-way street. It's not about writing large checks and moving on. Rather, it's about seeking partnerships with organizations that are making a tangible difference on the ground. Scott is inviting nonprofits to step forward and make a case for receiving a donation. It's an approach that is as much about accountability as it is about empowerment. By doing so, Scott is not only ensuring that her funds are used effectively, but she's also fostering a culture of collaboration and shared responsibility. It's a refreshing change from traditional philanthropy, which often feels like a top-down process. Scott's philanthropy is a powerful reminder of the role the wealthy can play in addressing the world's most pressing challenges. It's a call to action for other billionaires to step up and use their wealth for the greater good. In a time of crisis, Scott's philanthropy is a reminder that compassion and generosity can indeed change the world. It's a message of hope that resonates now more than ever as we grapple with the challenges of our time. Through her actions, Scott is proving that it is possible to make a difference one donation at a time.